love this. <laughs> yeah. Nick's Garage is supported by Atlas Equipment and K-Tool International. A little while back, Mike from New York brought this incredible 1963 Chrysler 300J to Nick for a rebuild of the 413 Long Ram engine under the hood. didn't come without any problems, but Nick's got the car to a point where he's ready to take it out on the highway and give it a test. Hi, I'm Nick and welcome to my shop. All right, there's a lot of new viewers on our channel, and I want to introduce you guys this car that came in from New York, belongs to Mike. This is a 1963 Chrysler 300J. They only made roughly about 400 units. It is a very pricey car back in 63. You know, you could buy a basic Impala, fully loaded, and this would practically be double the price. Power windows, push button automatic, and of course you got a big 413 with a long RAM intel induction system. Here, let me show you guys. A lot of you guys don't believe this, but this is from the factory. Got a four barrel carter there and another four barrel carter on the other side. This is the way it came from the factory. This thing was designed to be a torque monster. This one we had it built, it is a 413 cubic inch, and we had it bored up to four and a quarter inch, it became a 426 cubic inch. Yes, we had an overhaul, we put new pieces, we put a little cam in it, we went to hydraulic flat tap it, and of course with the adjustable rockers. And we had a dyno test it, and just want to give you guys some numbers. It is a wedge engine. I wanted to tell you, this is when we dyno tested it. At 3,500 RPM, we pulled out 501 foot-pounds of torque, and the horsepower came in at 4,700 RPM at 372 horsepower. You know, it was pretty impressive because this is a heavy car. You know, this engine was designed with a long ram. Like if you're on the highway and you want sudden torque, if you wanted to pass a truck or a school bus or anything like that, all you had to do was floor it, let the two quads open up and then have a heavy kick down torque monster and just pass the bigger, the bigger vehicle. So we're gonna take a drive after and I'll, take a, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. In the meantime, I had it for a while here. I did not take it for road test because we had some issues with the distributor. This car comes from the factory with a mechanical tack drive cable right here, which is for the distributor, okay? It's got a cast iron distributor from the factory for the tachometer to work off, right here. It's got a mechanical tack drive tachometer. And from the factory, this cast iron distributor that came with this engine came with a dual point setup. You know, we try to do everything we can. We tried to change the setup points. We also had them clean. We had them adjusted and for some reason, Every time I put the distributor on, I couldn't get it to perfect. It would have a rough idle, it would stall, it would backfire. Then I said, you know what, let's go to electronic. So we went with an electronic module. Then we had another issue with this one. We got it in, and every time I'd rev it up, when the vacuum would kick in, it would just stall on me. And then at a higher pin, it would even backfire. So you know what, going back and forth with this so many times, I gave up. We know we're gonna give this out to our specialist to have it done. You know, I gave up on it. So in the meantime, so I can get this car running, so I can make a video for our viewers here on our channel, and for Mike, I installed the electronic ignition. So I wanted to keep it simple. So for now, we don't have a tachometer. Okay, so it's an automatic car. Do we really need a tack? We don't need a tack, but I like to have it working to see it. You know, it's part of uh, what I like doing. 
But in the meantime, I just want to take it for a drive. Then if we can figure out another distributor in the future, we'll get it done. But that's an easy fix. All we do is install it, put the cable on, put the power wires on, and it's done and set the timing. You know, this is a very luxury car. It's got a console without a shifter, of course, because it's a push button automatic. It's got a rim blow steering wheel. It's got bucket seats. It's got power windows. It's got a full dash, mechanical tack drive the tachometer, all gauges, padded brake pad, and also uh, gas pedal. And it's, you know, it's a very unique car. It's a very luxury car and uh, it's a high-end trim. It's got a fastback style back window, just like a Charger 500. 1969. It's got a beautiful rear end. Bumper guards were an option. Beautiful tail lights. And of course, it's a J car. Back in 63, you know, it's an odd design. You know, some people like it, some people don't. But don't forget, you guys, this was a human design, not computers back then. It was all humans. Anyways, you know what? Bottom line, you gotta give them credit. No matter what they did, they did it on their own. And they did it in their own studios at Chrysler Corporation in Michigan. So if you guys will join me, let's go for a ride and let's see how it goes. I'm just gonna warm it up for a few minutes. There we go. This sure is a luxury interior it's got a square steering wheel which is not very common yeah bucket seats what's funny is this is a console when they have the automatic car on the floor but in this case you don't have a shifter here you got an ashtray there pretty unique this is cool. Look at this chrome bars over the headliner. Nice, very nice. It's so humongous this year. It's like a luxury interior. Sounds good. I just hope it goes good. She's gonna warm it up. It's charging. It's got a clock built in, but the clock's not working, but doesn't matter. Okay. It's got no oil pressure gauge, it's got a light. Well, it was very common back in the early 60s. After all, this is a 1963 Chrysler 300 J letter car, I should say. This is funny. You know, the rear view mirrors are not on the door. They are on the fender. I don't know how the people drove those cars then, but on that one there, it's very hard to see. This one here, eh, it's not bad. Okay. This is how you do it, you guys. Look, you press the brake. Then you put the lever into uh, up position, which is like neutral. Then you press the reverse button, like so. There we go. Push the button automatic. Only Chrysler had that, I believe. Back in the early 60s. Sounds like a muscle car, right? Even though it's a two-door big family sedan. They used to say this is a, what you call a rich man's muscle car. I'm just gonna go up and down the street for a bit, just to warm up the transmission. So I can kick it down and see how it goes. After all, I just want to warm up the transmission, and that's all. And then we'll take it from there. Where's the seatbelts in this car? Okay. Surprise, this car has seatbelts. Not bad, not bad. Ah, you know what they say, yeah, safety first, you guys. How does this buckle on? Let's see. All right, adjust it like that. There we go. Let me put my glasses down. 
Like I said, let me warm up the transmission, then I want to kick it around. Shifting good. It's such a smooth car. No rattles, nothing whatsoever. It brakes good. I believe it's got four drums, if I remember correctly. You know, after working on so many different cars, you forget once in a while. Okay, here we go. Okay, we'll try it again. I like that big humming sound. You know when you you go full throttle with these type of air cleaners, you have that big woo sound when you go full throttle. Okay, let's do it again. Might have to back up the timing a little bit. I think it's a bit too much advanced. Just want to try it again. Wow. Flip the tires there. Back up the timing a little bit. Man, it goes pretty good, man. <laughs> Don't forget, you guys, this is one big heavy car. And it's not a modified engine, it's just a long ram, short version induction system with a 426 wedge. I'm gonna try it one more time, then we'll bring it back. We're gonna back up the timing. Okay, just gonna grab a wrench, back up the timing. I will not need a timing light, I'm just gonna back it up a little bit. I'm just gonna grab a half inch wrench. I wanna back up the timing just a bit and try it out again. And here we go. I won't use the timing light. I'm just gonna back it up a couple of degrees and see how it goes. You heard those stars this they tripped it when it uh, upshifted. Okay, I just backed up the timing a little bit. Let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Here we go. After all, I want to take it on the other route. That's what it was designed for. So I'll try it one more time to check the timing, and then we'll take it from there.
Okay, here we go. Such a big car, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's an, uh, <laughs> you gotta know how to control this car, let me tell you. And you know what? We're warming up these four drum brakes was uh, a big uh, no-no because, you know, we gotta let these brakes cool down once in a while. Here I am killing it one after the other. So it's like the timing might be okay there, so I'm gonna might leave it. Here we go. I'll try one more time. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Like I said, I wanted to fix the original distributor to make it uh, work well. But you know, a little calibrating on the carburetors maybe I might have to do, but you know what? For now, let me just make my uh, video on the highway and then uh, do some fine tuning, but I think it's not bad for a ride right now. You know what, since it has a four drum brake, we're gonna let it cool down a bit, then we'll take it for a ride on the highway. It's got a four drum brake. I noticed that the brakes got a little bit hot. So I'm gonna let the four drums cool down, because the brakes, I feel that they got pretty hot as I was going up and down full throttle there, hitting the brakes. So we're gonna hit the auto route, which you Americans call the interstate. So stay tuned. Got George with the cameraman up ahead of us with his uh, with his personal car. So he's got his cameras on board, and uh, we're gonna try to do something we don't usually do, and uh, we're gonna try it out. See how it goes. You know, we're trying. We're always trying new stuff, and uh, I hope the camera works very well. We're gonna be on the road. We're gonna do some uh, kick down, uh, downshifting, and. See how this car performs. But you know, there's sometimes a lot of cars on the highway, and it's gonna be kind of difficult, but we're gonna do the best we can. So we're gonna get on the road and let's do it. I hope I can see out from the mirror. 
kind of difficult with these mirrors. to build a torque monster at a certain RPM at a certain mile per hour in the highway, you kick it down and go. Pretty good, let me tell you. Love this. <laughs> yeah. Nobody expects a big car like this to just spin the tires when it shifts. When it shifts gears. Wow. This is awesome. Just love it. I hope all the lights are working on the car. I never did check that. I never expected to be driving at night. But this is cool. Driving a 413 wrong induction system. Short version, which is a, there were two models of the uh, long ram induction system. There was a long version and a short version. You know, they both are identical, except this is the internal design, which is a short version. But, anyways, this is the way it came from the factory. It's pretty cool. This car needs a front end job, or should I say a wheel alignment or something. It kind of swings a bit, you know. I, all I did was the engine work, but you know what? I should have checked the front end while we're at it at the shop. Maybe I should look at it because uh, after all, Mike's gonna drive it back to New York. So now that I'm just testing it out, you know, this is a dual quad eight barrel engine. This is cool, man. 1963, you guys. This is awesome. 
I never thought I'd be driving one of these. I used to see them in the car shows, but I never thought I'd be driving one. concentrating how to drive this car we have to check the front end I'm not so sure on this one especially when you kick it when you're coasting it's not bad but when I floor it yeah it's another story but it still goes good let me tell you I just love the way it trips the tires when it shifts gear. Just when it up shifts, I love it. Not bad, handles pretty good. Porsche bar suspension. Four drum brakes. See if I can spin those stars. I'm gonna move up a bit. Try one more time. Hey, it's spun for quite a while, eh? It's a non show grip. Here we go. I think we did enough testing, it went pretty well. I kind of loved it. And with all that fancy camera work on the highway, I think it went well. Not bad for a question 300 1963. It's got a lot of torque on the highway, let me tell you. And if I wanted to pass a vehicle, this car, no sweat. Hi, my name is Nick and welcome to my shop. Okay, so it's mail time and I got something very special because I just came back from Chrysler's at Carlisle just a few days ago and I got a lot of gifts and I want to thank a lot of people that were down there 
giving me gifts, hugs, kisses, or whatever you want to call it. And of course, you also gave me some gifts. And I hope I have all the names correctly because there was so much, so much going on. I was crowded. I was alone. And, you know, I, and I, I, I didn't know where to start. So now I just want to thank what I got. And I think I got everything because, you know, we had a lot of snacks. We had a lot of coffee bags given to so many people. Did I remember their names? Yes. Some have their names in their packages. I hope I have them in the correct place. But anyways, I just want to thank everybody. And I'll go through all these items one by one. And thank you guys. So we'll start with this here. This was something very special. This one here is from Corey. And if you guys take a good look, this is all the car chase movies. You name it, from Vanishing Point all the way to Repo Man. I've never seen this before. I've got a few of these VHSs on my house. And of course, this is something very special. Corey, thank you. And then also I've got Tom from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tom, I know you're watching me. So I want to just want to thank you for the coffee. Yes, we do have a grinder. We will grind it. We want to have it. And you know, I got so much coffee, so we're good for the whole winter. So Tom, thank you. And uh, I'll see you again next year. Some more coffee here. This one I got to thank. I got to thank Charlie. Charlie from Pennsylvania. He also brought us some more coffee. Okay, right here. Freedom Fuel Coffee. Then, of course, I've got this other uh, viewer, Walt and Teresa from Pennsylvania, Mechanicsburg, not far from Carlisle. They brought us a bag full of snacks. And of course, you know, on the way home on the, during the trip, we ate all the uh, snacks that we had. And, uh, you know, it was a few things left over. Now, if I remember correctly, was it this, this, it was a few other items, and it was a bottle, I'm not so sure. But I just wanted to thank you, of course, Walt and Teresa. Thank you from Pennsylvania. And if, uh, if I have it wrong, I don't know if, uh, who's giving me the bottle of uh, Uzo, if I, I don't remember the name, so please comment below, give me your name, so I can write on the bottle, and I also wanted to thank you. And Roadrunner James, if you're watching, I know you gave me the icon for uh, St. Nicholas, which is my name also, to put in my Kowalski Challenger. And I want to thank you for that too. So thank you, James. And we got some more coffee here, which is from Adam and Jennifer from New York. Yeah, never had that one before. So Adam, Jennifer, thank you. And uh, we have a lot of coffee to brew here. And I wanted to say, I wanted to say a very special thank you to a lot of people that were there. I want to thank Ed and the crew at the, the car show, or should I say, the, uh, on the fairgrounds. Because, you know, we had some issues with the truck. We needed to change the front brake pads. So Ed came and uh, Ed also helped me fix the uh, tie down in one of the trailers that broke off. So Ed, if you're watching, thank you. And also Ed was responsible for finding Joe, the tool man on the grounds, brought us some tools to get the tie down fixed and also lend me the tools to change the front brake pads on the Dodge Ram that we went down with a tow vehicle. And, uh, and uh, we got it all done. So Ed, thank you very much. And of course, Joe on the ground. I also want to thank Stefan from Gatineau that lent us his uh, trailer that towed the uh, Hemi engine that we had on display. So Stefan, thank you very much for the trailer, did the job and it was an easy, it was an easy fix. And uh, you know, it's a small light trailer, aerodynamics, he did the job, thank you. I also wanted to thank a lot of people that, uh, you know, like when we wanted to pull the engine out of the trailer and pull it back in, you know, we didn't even have to use the electric winch. You know, everybody was there to push it out, push it back in after the show was over. And, you know, I was overwhelmed with so many good people. And I also want to thank Ante who brought me lunch for uh, Saturday. And of course, so many others that brought me drinks and food and so on, just like last year. You know, I was overwhelmed. I didn't have a chance to go around the grounds to check out other people, their cars and everybody else. And then also want to thank Dr. Go and Kim for such a big snack that you brought us. You know, there was so much. And uh, I also awarded them the, uh, the uh, plaque for the, uh, the car I picked on the show. You know, this car has so much history and I couldn't believe it what the Dr. Go said. So congratulations on it. Dr. Go and Kim, I want to congratulate you guys. It was an honor meeting you guys. And of course, it was an honor meeting a lot of people. You know, there's so many. I also want to thank Ed, the organizer who got us in there and gave us a nice spot to uh, to show off our Hemi engine. And uh, thank you, Ed. And I also met someone very special from all the way from New Zealand. Ronnie, it was a pleasure meeting you and your wife. And you know, I couldn't believe it. I thought you guys were English and you know, with your accent, I never knew you guys were from New Zealand. And of course, I wanna give you guys a big thank you for passing by and meeting me. And it was an honor to meet you. Thank you. I also wanted to say a big thank you meeting uh, David from Graveyard Cars. And also Greg, who was the owner of the Black Ghost Challenger. You know, I met a lot of stars down in the, um, Pennsylvania. Was, I had a great time. I met so many people. 
But most of all, I want to thank all my viewers, all my guys that were there that uh, came to uh, see me. I can say a very special thank you for that came all the way down there to see me down in my little corner back in the, uh, at the uh, show. And all, of course, and all the gifts and everything. You know, I, I wanted to thank everybody letting me sign their caps, their shirts, and whatever they brought. And there's a few other gifts. Maybe I don't have them here. Maybe they're in the trailer. There was so much going on. I, I apologize if I mixed up anything. But anyway, there was so much going on. I was alone, and there were so many people. So I just want to give you guys a big thank you for showing up, and I can't ask for anything more. Now I got back home, I came to my shop, and I got some more stuff from the postman. And here they are. And our first one is, and this one is from, I believe, ISN. Oh, this is the company that uh, gave me the, uh, the tools and the uh, lift so I could work in my shop. Oh, and it's our wonderful sponsor. What do we got here? Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> you know, being so famous with so many flags, you know, you have a company that sponsors you on tools. And of course, what would they send you? A flag. Or should I say two flags? And which one is this? So I gotta make more space here. All right, here we go. There it is, global flag. You know, we're global, the tools are global, and here we are. Atlas Equipment. I wanna thank them, because they, you know, supporting me with two lifts here in the shop. And also, more tools than that. And then, of course, we got another flag here, K Tool International, here we are. You know, they gave me a few toolboxes, working with them. Okay, so we got two more flags to put up. Thank you guys. Thank you, ISN. Quality equipment and of course, K-Tool International. Thank you. And this one here is from Quebec. And this is from Ryan and Chloe. Okay, what do we got here? Fragile. Okay, we gotta take it easy here. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, here we go. Tunic, all right. You know, I saved every letter. For all you watching, just to let you guys know, every letter I get from all the packaging around the world, I put them in my, uh, into my uh, books. I've got quite a few of them saved. We have a book for every year, and this is probably our sixth or seventh book right now. This is the Charger 6 in 1970. You know, I was telling Joyce, this is from Joyce. Here we go, let's read the letter. Hello, Nick, it's Joyce. This is a drawing my son made for you. My son is an artist with uh, autism, and he is now a digital art, trying to get a college to accept him with no high school, which is not an easy task. He is good at drawing and computers. High school will be difficult, but he's still trying to get that too. He wanted to draw you something as a thank you for getting the 1970 Charger up and running on time. For all of us, without your help and attention to urgency, we will not have the car and it wouldn't have passed the inspection for the graduation. So this is from my son. Thank you. And a big thank you from me, Chloe, Martin, and my son, Ryan. So thank you so much for making that day come true for all of us, especially the kids. Nick, we all will see you soon. And I have more work and cars to get done. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. And that's Joyce in the back here. And uh, I want to say a very special thank you. So Ryan, uh, you're welcome very much. And I see you did a drawing for me. So let's see what you've done. Matter of fact, Joyce was here the other day. Boy, they sure wrapped it good, let me tell you. Oh, wow. Wow, check this out. Nick's Garage. June 28, 2023. This is cool. That's my Kowalski Challenger, the Kowalski vest, and Nick's Garage. This is something he drew on his own. Look at that. 21 years old, beautiful. Thank you, Ryan, and, uh, congratul and congratulations, Chloe, and thank you to the whole family, thank you. And the last one here from the USA, and this is from Bobby from Maryland. Okay, here we go. I remember Bobby calling me in one day, he says, Nick, with all that noise going on in the dining room, you gotta be protected, safety first. Okay, so you know what? He says, Nick, I'm gonna send you something that you're gonna need to use in the dining room. You know, there's so much noise in there that you could damage your ears. So he goes, Nick, I'm gonna send you something that you need. He finally had it delivered here to me. So now I just wanna open it up in front of all my viewers here on Nick's Garage and see what he sent us. And this is not cheap, you guys. Okay, here we go. Made by 3M. 
Dear Nick, my name is Bobby, Bobby Hop, and I really enjoy your channel. I have a 2018 Hellcat, a 2021 TRX, and a 2023 TRX. I couldn't be happy with the gifts my son just picked up for me. Good for you, man. In 1997, I started my company with my brother and son and partners. We clean up oil spills all around Maryland, DC, and Virginia. I'm sending you guys these headsets in hopes that they will help you with communication and protect the hearing of Nino, Leo, Manny, but most of all, you, Nick. You are the host of the channel. I also want to make sure that your talented cameraman, George, gets you a shout out on for all this, his hard work, as well as I hope to meet you and shake your hand one day soon. Okay, Bobby, what did you send this here? Let's see. Three sets, I got three sets, you guys. Something very unique, which I have never seen. This is how it goes. All right, it goes like this. Wow, can't hear nothing. Okay, these are headsets that when you go to a very noisy room, like the dining room, and you want to talk to somebody, you don't want to remove these off your ears, but it's so loud with the engine running or dyno testing. And we also have a walkie-talkie built in them. Like right here is a microphone, and there are speakers built in. So while you're going through loud noises in the room, a perfect example is the dining room, that you could talk with Manny or whoever's with me or George the cameraman. So we have three sets, one for George, one for myself, and whoever else is there working with me in the dining room. So Bobby, I just don't know what to tell you. This is very expensive. And I know you do a lot of hard work to clean the uh, petroleums around your neighborhood, or should I say in your state. You do a good thing, keep that state clean, good for you. And of course, I want to thank you for this, but this is something we can use in our shop. This is very special, and I want to thank you and your family and everybody, and thank you very much, and of course, to your company. Here's one of his Hellcats right here, with the black hood. Oh, well, there's his two uh, Dodge Rams, or should I say Ram pickups, both Hellcat engines. And now they also installed a turbocharger. Wow, on top of the supercharger. This is crazy power. What are you gonna do with all that power? And of course, this is his company. Bobby, thank you very much. And are they very high tech? Don't worry, buddy, we'll figure them out. This is awesome. People are gonna think I'm on the uh, newscast. <laughs> this is nice. And we have three sets. Bobby, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, I just wanna thank all my incredible viewers. Thank you for all these incredible gifts, you guys. You didn't have to. And of course, I want to thank you. And don't forget to subscribe and press the like button on my channel. And you guys, till next time, you'll see me again on the next show. Uh, and I want to give you guys a big hug and a big thank you. Thank you very much. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Mix Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.